Welcome to CC Rock. I am Metal Matt, and I am at the Roadhouse in Sacramento. You want a little sawdust? You want a little room sound? Hey, tonight on CC Rock, you're going to get all of that and more, plus a few unidentified flying objects. No, it's not E.T., it's UFO, man. We got Phil Moog, we got Vinny Moore, the new guitarist, we got some great band members, we got Jason Bonham on drums. This is going to be a great show from the Roadhouse in Sacramento with UFO promoting their new album, You Are Here, Baby. That's right. UFO is at the top of their game, and they got a great new stage show. Definitely got to check these guys out, but hey, sit back, relax, because we're going to have some great music from UFO, baby. Yo! What are you doing? Who said that? Jumping Jehoshaphat, a giant oil filter that talks. I'm framing the filter, and what do you think you're doing with my child? It's your child? I didn't know he was your kid. Well, it is, and he's a she. Oh, yeah? Well, what should I do with her? Do the right thing. Recycle your used oil and filter. Even after draining, a used oil filter contains about a quarter cup of oil. If placed in the garbage, that oil will leak into the ground and then into the landfills, polluting the soil and someday the water supply. Seal your filter in a strong Ziploc bag and take it to a certified used oil and filter collection center. Or if your city has curbside used oil and filter recycling, just put it on the curb with the rest of recyclable items. Call 1-800-NO-DUMPING or check out our website at www.bunnelhead.com. To some of you back there, it looks a bit like floating heads. We do have bodies, I can assure you. This is off of uh, the Fawcett album, and it's something called Let It Roll.
welcome back to CC Rock. And you know, I am with one of the amazing singers of the rock and roll world. This guy has been around for more than 30 years. He's done some memorable stuff on rock and roll, some great ballads. He's one of my favorite singers. We've got Phil Mogg right here. How you doing? Ah, fine, thank you. Very well. Hey, you know, that is, is it Mogg? Is that correct? Yeah, Mogg. As dog. Mogg. Mogg dog. Hey, I never say your, your vocals are an easy way to remember it. Yeah, you're never dogged on stage, I'll tell you that. You're always, always up there, giving it your all. I mean, amazing sound. You've done so much music over the 30 years. I mean, 30 plus years, you've been up there on stage doing so much. All the way back to the days, you know, you had Mick Bolton on guitar, Michael Shanker, Paul Chapman, Tommy Atomic, and now you've got a new guy, Vinnie Moore. Tell me about life with Vinnie. Um, Vinnie uh, came in when Michael finally departed, uh, just over a year ago, or we, you know, went, and, um, again, no, went, and uh, we was looking for a guitarist at that point, um, and we'd gone all through the English you know, it was around then. Then we had to move to Europe and expanded our search. And eventually we got to, uh, to America and a um, CD of uh, Vinny's ended up in my house and I put that on. He was getting a little bit nervous by that point because we were, were thinking, oh, are we going to find something? And I put the, the CD on and it sounded great. Great sound, great touch. And, uh, you know, rang him up, spoke, Swapped some material, got on very well. The material worked out well, so it was uh, it was an American. That was uh, and that was it. That was more or less sealed up um, just before we did the album, uh, just before Christmas last year. So uh, it worked well. So you're saying that Vinny's easier to work with Mike than Michael? No, no. just uh, <laughs> different. Different. Yeah, everyone. I mean, everyone's. Different, and I think uh, most guitarists or anyone have got their own little quirks, myself included. So, it, but just to get a, a band working well together without any great theatre or drama off stage or on um, it is quite a feat sometimes. And uh, at the moment, we have a, a great working relationship, and we're having a lot, lot of fun playing together. Well, you know, I know Vinny's got some great instrumental stuff. I mean, he's done a lot of stuff with Mike Varney. I know you've done a lot of your solo stuff, plus your UFO stuff in the later years with Mike Varney at Shrapnel. Was that a connection there that Mike said, hey, why don't you check out this guy, Vinny Moore? Is that some part of it, or is it just... I, I think, I think he, he did, going back years ago, about um, t 10 years ago, when Michael uh, went on his walkabout, one of his walkabouts, and... Uh, I think Varney had said then, he said, hey, hey, I got a great guy here, you know, this Finney Moore um, would be perfect for you. But, uh, you know, the situation changed and we never never followed up on that. So um, and it wasn't until now, this is like 10 years later, that, that for some quirky reason that it came via, I think Mike had said something, but our agent had said something. And the manager knew his manager from Dream Theatre, blah, 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 and so it came back that way. So, so just fate, maybe circumstances in that way. Well, he's got some great solo stuff. I mean, The Maze, I mean, there's some really good music that Finney's done. And I mean, even when I saw Michael at The Edge in Palo Alto, he opened up for Michael one night. I said, man, this guy is a virtuoso, very similar to, I'm going to say it's the same as Michael. Michael's got his own, obviously his own style, a lot different in a sense, in ways than Vinny's. But once again, both really incredible musicians and that's the main thing that seems to you always have a great band when you come on stage you you've been brought in some great guys I know that uh, Pete Wade's had some visa problems so you've brought in Barry Sparks you've got uh, Mr. Bonham the on the drums I mean you've got a great band how, how do you pull these great guys in to play with you I think it's um, I think there's a little bit of luck in it in it all with, with anything you know the, the time and I mean Jason came from a friend of mine Spike who sings in, in the choir boys was doing some gigs on his on his own in in London, and I said, "Oh, I've got to find a drummer because before we'd had Ainsley Dunbar doing the studio stuff, and uh, he said, "Hey, why don't you come down, like you know, and have a look at Jason?" So I went down there and, and met Jason, and um, you know, great bloke, great drummer, and said to him, "Look, we're doing um, UFO, and we really would like a drummer. Would you fancy joining?" And he said, uh, 
Oh, is Pete Way in the band? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, is Pete Way in the band? Yeah. I said, yeah, yeah, you know, but he's, he's controllable. We got him caged. Uh -huh. And um, he called back in a couple of days and said, yeah, that would be great. Let's get together. And, um, w and we went on from there. So it was, uh, it was good. It was good fun. Well, you speak about, you know, you went on from there because, you know, right now you are here, which is your new disc. I mean, I, I really, I like, I mean, if the first disc with Vinnie Moore, you never know what that first disc with the new guitars is going to sound like. I mean, let's face it, people have listened to you for, for years. They've been, you know, thinking, okay, Michael Shanker, Michael Shanker, Paul Chapman for a while, Tommy Atom for a little while too. But, you know, this is a whole different sound. I mean, this is a little bit different. I mean, it's still UFO, but it's, it's a different sound, a different guitar sound. Is that something you, making you are here, was it difficult? Um, no, I mean, it wasn't difficult to, doing it. Um, I think it was more a conscious effort for because uh, we went, we did it in Europe, um, and we, we did it in Germany actually, in Michael's hometown, <laughs> ironically enough. Yeah, we're the German producer, and uh, we, we more or less went for a nice let's let's get this down, clean up, let's not use the old, you know, like going back to where we've been before. Let's have a nice clean cut uh, thing of something new. We've got a new guitarist. Jason's in and everything peeps over. So it was, uh, we went to Germany and did, you know, did the whole thing afresh. And I think that's, um, was good for us and good for the record too. Oh, here at the Roadhouse. I'm gonna play a track off the uh, You Are Here album CD, which is not on vinyl. A silly called When Daylight Goes to Town. <laughs>
Well, you know, Pete's not on the tour right now. He had a little visa problem. Is this is a t is a temporary phase, or is this something? What's going on with that? He uh, well, we all, I had I had visa problems too. They've gone back to the you have to go to the American embassy now and do an interview. And uh, when, when I went, it was they, they do a thing where they ask you if you've been arrested or not, because uh, which I said. How many rock stars have not been arrested? <laughs> well, it's something you f you forget, you know. You uh, and I I said no, but she did that thing where. You, I could see her looking at the screen, and she went, are you sure? And you know where you go, well, maybe. I, I remember some customs thing we had, but that was like 25, 30 years ago, up in Canada, coming in from Buffalo. There was a visa problem there. But then I said, well, I'm not sure, blah, blah, blah. So they take your fingerprint, send it to the FBI. I came home, and um, my girlfriend said, yes, you were. You was arrested in Lubbock, wasn't you, for mooning the audience? And you know, you go, oh, yes. And it's like the, that kind of thing where you, the heat comes off. Like, what city was that? In Lubbock, Texas. Oh, Lubbock. Okay. We was doing an Aussie uh, tour at yeah. the time. And um, I've never done it before. I've never done it since. It was one, and why, I don't know. But I got arrested there for that. And uh, that was the reason. So it screwed up the first part of our tour. And of course, meanwhile, while well, that was going on, Pete's also getting, getting a load of problems, and that, I believe, although what he tells you sometimes, it's like knitting fog, you know, you can't, you know, well, what did you say, what do you mean then? It, it, he kind of Get embellishes right. everything and it gets into another story, so in, you end up not knowing what he was saying in the first place, it's very difficult. But anyway, he, um, I think his basic problem was overstaying, he, although he got married here, but that was by a spiritualist in the garden, so mm. I'm not sure how... Well, he counted, huh? <laughs> yeah, and then he I, he never applied for a, a residency or a card or anything, and then got arrested in Kentucky for some... Oh, driving his wife's car, who was a, a, who'd unfortunately passed away, but um, her equipment was still in it, so... So he, he's got cornered on a number of things, but... Um, He's paid a fortune out and a lawyer to try and sort through all this, and he's got to reapply in six months. So hopefully, uh, when we when we come back for, um, I believe we're coming back June, July, summer tour. Oh. Um, Pete, collaboration thing or what is this? Uh, we're doing a, a DVD Ooh. and um, a live thing, and some other material we've never done before. We're going to try and get it like a mix bag. Oh. And uh, I, I think we should have that out by then and come over and, and promote that. And I think we might be doing a, I'm not sure, a tour with the, who you mentioned earlier. Woo! With Dio. I think that might, we might do a co-headline thing, so. Oh, interesting. So, well, you never can tell, you know, yeah, in this yeah. sort of thing. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's, this is mountain water, San Francisco style here. I believe uh, we're going to play something off the same album and yeah, this kids yeah. See now that's what a complete cock up <laughs> Strings to live on, it's now cold or pressed. Why are you trying to make me even move so fast? Not in real trouble, but I can't go back home. They locked those doors and left out alone. You can come to my place and swing it from a car. Lots of people do it and we want. I'm a loser. 
I'm Rob from Central Tune-Up. Check this out. Oil filter. Oil filter crusher. Did you know that every drained used oil filter that comes off your car still contains up to a cup of used oil? That used oil can destroy our environment and water supply. Do the right thing and place your used oil filter in a clear Ziploc bag and place it on the curb with the rest of the recyclable items. If your city does not have curbside used oil recycling, take it to your nearest certified used oil and filter recycling center. Call ahead for hours and the amount accepted. What more, if all the oil filters that were sold yearly in the United States were recycled, you would have enough steel to build 16 pro sports stadiums. Be good to the earth. Recycle your used oil and filters for a better tomorrow. Call 1-800-NO-DUMPING or check out our website at www.funnelhead.com. Said you've always been great on stage, done some amazing stuff. If you weren't the singer Phil Mold from UFO, what would you be? What, what, what would your profession be? Do you have, would you have any idea of what you would do? No, not really. I, um, I've been off on different courses and different things for other stuff, but I always come back to, to this. This always, it was always the point that I come back to. It's something that just draws you in. You can get a little bit jaded with it or a little bit bored with it because you're not seeing anything that's either on TV or on radio that's productive but then you might hear something that comes along that will excite you and you go oh this is good and then suddenly you're back in you know back into it again I could take her somewhere fancy I still need that lucky 